getting around the FAT32 4GB file size limit. I recently purchased a 32GB USB 3 stick that was formatted with FAT32. I plugged it into my computer and attempted to copy a film onto it. The file was over 4GB however and it would not let me copy the file across because of the 4GB file size limit imposed by FAT32. After some googling, I found that I could format my USB stick to use XFAT which would mean I could put files onto the stick greater than 4GB in size and the drive would work on both my Mac and my PC. The problem with this solution is that my PS3 cannot detect the USB stick when it is formatted with XFAT. I would like to know if there is a way I can have my USB stick formatted so it can have files greater than 4GB and work on my PC, Mac and PS3. Unfortunately, there is no way to copy a and gt 4GB file to a FAT32 file system. And a quick Google says your PS3 will only recognize FAT32 file systems. Your only option is to use smaller files. Maybe chop them into pieces before moving them or compress them. I would try a networked solution to file sharing. Natively, you cannot store files larger than 4GB on a FAT file system. The 4GB barrier is a hard limit of FAT, the file system uses a 32-bit field to store the file size in bytes, and 2 to the power of 32 bytes equals 4GB, actually, the real limit is 4GB minus 1 byte, or 4 and NBSV, 294 and NBSV, 967 and NBSV, 295 bytes because you can have files of zero length. So you cannot copy a file that is larger than 4 GB to any plain FAT volume. XFAT solves this by using a 64-bit field to store the file size but that doesn't really help you as it requires a reformat of the partition. However, if you split the file into multiple files and recombine them later, that will allow you to transfer all of the data, just not as a single file, so you'll likely need to recombine the file before it is useful. For example, on Linux you can do something similar too. Here, I use truncate to create a sparse file 6 gib in size. Just substitute your own, then, I split them into segments approximately 2 gib in size each. The last segment is smaller, but that does not present a problem in any situation I can come up with. You can also, instead of bytes equals 2 GB, use number equals 4 if you wish to split the file into 4 equally sized chunks, the size of each chunk in that case would be 1 and NBSV, 610 and NBSV, 612 and NBSV, 736 bytes or about 1.6 GB. To combine them, just use cat, concatenate. Confirm that the two are identical. This can be used with any maximum file size limitation. Many file archivers also support splitting the file into multi-part archive files, earlier, this was used to fit large archives onto floppy disks, but these days it can just as well be used to overcome maximum file size limitations like these. File archivers also usually support a store or no compression mode which can be used if you know the contents of the file cannot be usefully further losslessly compressed, as is often the case with already compressed archives, movies, music and so on. When using such a mode, the compressed file simply acts as a container giving you the file splitting ability, and the actual data is simply copied into the archive file, saving on processing time.
Expanding on Michael's idea, many compression utilities slash formats support a store mode, where they don't actually do any compression. Most of those same utilities also support splitting into multiple archives. Combine the two, and you can split a file without wasting a bunch of time compressing it, especially if it's non-compressible data. I've used this technique myself to overcome the exact problem you're having. One big advantage to doing it this way is that the compression format acts as a wrapper, keeping you from accidentally doing anything with only one part of the file. It also tends to be simpler for non-technical users. Not everyone knows how to cat files, but almost everyone can open a zip. It's also very obvious that it's a multi-part file, since the file is formatted as such. Loose files may not look like a multi-part file, especially if they lose their file names somehow. Of course, if you actually want to be able to work on the separate files, this doesn't work as well. This may be important if you don't have any scratch space to write the final file to. In that case, you should just split the file. Here's an example of splitting a file using zip on Linux. If you're more of a GUI person, my goto has always been 7-zip. Another option not stated would be to use partitions. A USB flash drive is most often treated by the OS as a hard drive. Resize the FAT32 partition and make an XFAT, or other supporting file system, partition that is large enough to hold the file. If you ever need to access the large file in place on the USB drive, this is probably the best solution. If all you need to do is transfer the file, and don't mind having to copy it to the hard drive to use it, the splitting solution is probably better. This won't work if your USB drive is set up as a super floppy, but this is increasingly uncommon. You can convert a super floppy into a hard drive format by using a partitioning tool such as disk or parted. But it will probably involve copying the files off, converting, copying them back, and then making the drive bootable again. If you want to support the channel, please consider subscribing.